Maestro? Mm -hmm. Okay. What we have here is a uh, Yamaha Zuma. This is the vertical pre-bug. A wonderful place that we don't want to live, but we would love to visit California. A lot of videos on CVT stuff. You can see this belt is sucked down really far. He's already done the Sharpie trick. Let's see. So, and again, we got videos on this as well. So he's sharpening this here. Something to remember too, when you guys are buying clutches and bells, um, there's a 105 millimeter clutch and bell, there's a 107 clutch and bell. Nope. <laughs> you, you'll have to go to the website to enter it in to see what the discount is. Are you going to do it for Julie? I do everything for Julie. Well, I'm actually happily married. Um, Paul's doing it for Julie. Do it for Julie, Paul! Oh, what are you doing over here, Paul? Is this a special service that nobody else provides? So you get He's Paul's blood, sweat. We you get a little bit of his DNA in every, in every D restrict. So also you can kind of, when you compress it, you can see how far down your belt's getting. Hello, Brandon. Hi. Who is this? Hello, my name is Steven. I'm calling from River City Mortgage. How many, how many hot dogs can you fit in your mouth? You know, like the Polish, are you like a Polish dog kind of guy? Or you like the little, little ones you get at the, like the stop and rob little A and PMs. <laughs> oh, okay. Where were we? <laughs> <laughs> So this just came in. J Argo had it shipped up. Couldn't quite get it running right. Um we did full motor build for it, but there's some hiccups and he's tired of dealing with it, so send it to us. It's a fresh build, fresh motor, pressure tested and everything too, so um, he's got a list of some stuff he wants to go over. But first thing, we'll start it, go over the basics, make sure the jetting's right, make, check all the grounds, check the plug, and all that good stuff, so get it dialed in for him. That front end looks familiar. It does, yeah, we built that. Yeah. Looks good. We did? Yeah, we did. Well, you. Did you build it? <laughs> I built that. You built it, yeah. <laughs> Those are sliders. He just took the pucks off the ends. Yeah. But yeah, it's our, it's our engine. The wheels came from us. Polini carb. Man, it looks like you did a good job. It's a pretty clean build, for sure. That, co that Costa gauge is pretty legit. Is this something we get? What's that? We can. I don't know where he got that, but yeah, that's an easy thing to get. This. Pretty cool. Yeah, these are easy to get. Um, Looks like these are aftermarket panels. He just painted them more of a flat black, so. It's kind of a cool little, like yeah. a rat rod yeah, game exactly. type thing. Exactly, that's what he's going for. Ready, Maestro? Mm -hmm. Okay. What we have here is a uh, Yamaha Zuma. This is the vertical pre-bug. This came up from a wonderful place that we don't want to live, but we would love to visit California. Uh, this is Jay Argo's bike, really good customer. We did his SR50 uh, last year. Did his SR50. Um, yeah, super awesome customer, had it shipped up. We did the front end on this bike the full motor build as well. I think he did his own transmission, if I recall. We did the crank cylinder. It's got an MXS cylinder on it. Um, the Pliny, or the uh, Yasuni C16 pipe. Pliny, or no, actually he's got a kind of a basic stock style intake and a Pliny carb. He shipped it up to us because it just doesn't get on the pipe right. It just doesn't accelerate right. It doesn't take off right. This thing should be an absolute rocket. Something to remember on these high RPM uh, MXS stage six and similar cylinders. The transmissions are much trickier to set up. Reason being is they're gonna rev much higher um, than, a, than a, a sport cylinder. So when it revs higher, this transmission, you gotta go lighter on the rollers and then you have to go stiff on the clutch springs. So a couple things just pulling um, his cover off that I noticed. If you look back here, a lot of videos on CVT stuff, you can see this belt is sucked down really far in this pulley. So this will happen for a couple of reasons. Either your belt is too short 
Um, if your belt is worn down, you can get this as well. Or the, you need to add some shims up here. So you add shims up here, it's gonna open the space between your varied inner drive face, causing this belt to go down more in the back and up more in the front. We have a ton of videos on CVT tuning. And then I'm gonna check his belt because I'm pretty sure Something to remember too, when you guys are buying clutches and bells, um, there's a 105 millimeter clutch and bell, there's a 107 clutch and bell. If you buy just a 107 and you put it on a bike with the 105, the space between the edge of the, the interior of the bell and the pad is really small. So your clutch is gonna essentially grab sooner and you're never gonna be able to get that clutch to grab right. So make sure if you guys are installing clutches, make sure it's either the 105 or 107 and make sure you have the matching belt because I'm pretty sure he's got a 105 bell on here with a 107 clutch and yes it does fit but it's going to be much tighter so when this when this starts to move out it's instantly going to grab rather than having a little bit of time before it comes all the way out and grabs so um, this should be pretty easy i'm going to get the cbt closed because we pretty much know where it needs to be and then um and then run on the dyno because he said he, he thinks it has a um, air leak however it tested um good we run on the dyno just watch temps in here and just kind of run it up to, to verify it's good but this should be a Pretty easy fix, but just want to show you guys the importance of, of making sure you have the right CBD components and, and being able to look at this and tell basically what the issue is. Shouldn't have been there. Okay. <laughs> Washer between his clutch and his bell. Is there? Yeah, there's a hardened steel, like a gold washer between there. Yeah, he's got one shim in there, so we'll want to add another. Yeah, we'll add another shim in there, and that's going to space the drive face out a little more. So if you squeeze this, you see all that slack. It typically takes a minute for it to come up, but all that slack will get absorbed back here. Now you see how much higher that belt is. That right there, these guys right here. Yeah, just a couple shims. Pack of these available at shooterswapshop.com here in Oregon. Uh, so yeah, these shims are a big deal, guys. You wanna make sure you have, you have too many in. Oh, oh you got plenty, okay. If you have too many, uh, too many of these shims in, it's gonna cause that belt to slip. If you don't have enough, it's gonna mess up your acceleration, so it's a very fine balance of where you wanna be. Hello? Hello, Brandon. Hi. Who is this? Hello, my name is Steven. I'm calling from River City Mortgage regarding the property. I'm just wanted to share some information with you uh, regarding the wait, property. Wait, on, on what address? What, 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 wait, where is this at? South. South Rye. Okay, how many, hot dog, how, many, how many hot dogs can you fit in your mouth? Sorry? How many hot dogs can you fit in your mouth? No, like, do you eat the little hot dogs or the big giant, uh, like Oscar, like the, you know, like the Polish? Are you like a Polish dog kind of guy? Or you like the little, little ones you get at the, like the stop and rob little A and PMs. Both of them. Both, and how many do you, can you fit at one time, while still being able to breathe? The whole, the whole pack. You can fit a whole pack of hot dogs in your mouth. <laughs> Dang. No. <laughs> oh, okay. Where were we? <laughs> <laughs> that sounded like an actual serious call, though. No, it's not. Because he knew your address. No, it's spam. Yeah, you can find anybody's addresses. Any phone number, any address. Yeah. What? It's over right now. It's all fucked up. Well, put it back together. See my new shoes? My Romeos? They're so ugly, but they're so comfortable. You know, when you get old like me. You know your country when. It's not country. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. You ever seen someone walk around in like... Well, in the construction industry, everybody wears them because... Yeah, and everybody in the country construction industry is usually country. I disagree with no. that. No. Red All of them are like engineers, mix mechanical everything. engineers, electrical engineers. Brandon Warren's going to hear this comment. He's in the construction. He's Chad Lassie. He's anywhere. country. Well, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, they're yeah. both country. What are you That's talking true. about? That's true. Well, I would rather be country than be 
You live in the country, so it's not like it's an insult no. or anything. I ain't saying you a hillbilly. That's a 107. Uh, Brandon, can you can you do that for me again? Ooh, he's good at that. So he's got these really soft springs in here, uh, like Paul's hand, very soft and supple and weak. Weak. Damn. <laughs> Called you out. Uh, did you say I pulled him out? I said you called him out. <laughs> <laughs> I like pulled him out better. Uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on here, but this clutch is not a good fit with this bell. You didn't show him how he's engaging at idle, did you? No. Right. Paul can dog. explain to the camera what it Julie's, was doing. Julie's doing a ah, good no. job today. It's, But you know what's weird? Look at this. Look at how the, how the Polini fits in that one. And then the fly. The fly is just. See this? I wonder where he got this. I don't know exactly what's going on, but we are going to set him up with the Melosi uh, fly bell. That will work better with his Melosi fly clutch. So sometimes when you guys are mixing and matching stuff like this, it's really good to go just go with the matching. Like we have a lot of clutches and bells that are already matched online as a package. Um, so it may be a stage six bell with a Polini clutch or. or Polini clutch or whatever. Um, in this scenario, the fly clutch with the fly bell is going to be the, uh, a good pick for him. So let's go ahead and put this guy on, and it should be worlds better with some with some better springs as well. So also this Contra, um, I'm not sure what brand it is, but uh, it's probably really soft. When you when I push this pulley apart, it seemed really soft. So this is going to cause it to bog earlier too. Um, relatively, I mean, you're talking. This bike may need $100 worth of parts, um, but it's just having the knowledge of knowing what's wrong with it. So we'll start with the, um, we're gonna put a yellow Contra in here, and then we're going to use this Melosi Fly um, clutch, and we're gonna use a Melosi Fly bell, put it back together and see how it works. Are you gonna do it for Julie? I do everything for Julie. Well, I'm actually happily married. Um, Paul's doing it for Julie. Do it for Julie, Paul. Do what? Repack the silencer with no gloves? Yeah, for Julie. Yeah. Oh, what are you doing over here, Paul? Is this a special service that nobody else provides yeah. in the entire scooter industry? I do it barehanded for extra money. Paul is barehanding a silencer with uh, steel wool and fiberglass. He's de-restricting a silencer for her customer. It's already done. It's already done. Oh, yeah. This is a, a service here offered by Scooter Swap Shop. And nobody else, except for Scooter Swap Shop? Nobody else would do this with no gloves. No. Paul's, so you get Paul's blood, sweat, uh, there's no sweat. Some, there's, oh, there's, oh, there's probably, plenty of sweat, plenty of sweat just no not a lot of blood. I mean, yeah. you get a little bit of his DNA in every, in every D restrict. I've never seen Paul bleed. I don't know if he even has. No, no I have seen you bleed a few times. Oh, I see I see him nosebleed all the time. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's fun. you haven't had nosebleed for a while. Probably a couple months. Yeah. Have a good one. here Ooh. yeah okay first where we're gonna start with this guy um, these are gonna be your Melosi Delta or fly uh, clutch spring kit um, probably gonna put the reds in for him give that a shot they come with replacement weights too so this is we go through probably five or six hundred of these a year they're uh, one of the most common springs that you run and when you do a clutch not all springs are gonna fit all clutches so make sure if you get a clutch where you buy spring fish you buy the right ones um, because everyone's gonna be different there are different lengths and width and whatnot and different colors per brand yeah so if you call and be like oh I bought a kid on eBay they're red springs or yellow I'm gonna say mm -hmm. I don't I don't know because do you have a Yamaha and you put in yellow springs for a Dio that are too long or or whatever so Melosi I have probably five different red Melosis here in stock. that are all different lengths and widths and, and, and everything. So, um, and inside this little packet says what's strength yeah. and everything. Right yeah. Now. So Melosi, pro Melosi provides a, um, this folds out and then it gives you all your, your sizes on all the part numbers. Um, but yeah, good point. What you order online or whatever, um, doesn't really mean anything unless you have some documentation to go with it. And then we're going to set them up with the, uh, Melosi wing bell here so it's got the fins on the outside to help cool this bell really good bell for a 107 and then we're gonna set them up with the Melosi contra spring as well this is a 1500 so this is gonna be stiffer than the green one I don't know what that green one is guessing Polini Polini contras are always too soft they're I, that's why we don't stock them at all they never work right and then your shims right here so uh, these guys are cheap but this is probably 
the best gain to be had for the money. Um, I don't know how many shim kits we sell a year? Probably a thousand, probably. Oh, um, but these are, I would say, any bike you're doing, I would say these are necessary on every single one. Um, also, if you have a belt, you put a new belt, and you have, let's say you have two or three shims in it. As your belt wears, you need to remove these shims at the same time because your belt's getting narrower, so you take these shims out. So this will also allow you to get more performance out of your old belts. Let's see what we got here. Scooter Swap Shop Service Department. Uh, hi, do you carry uh, little uh, brake pads for scooters? Like, and, uh, uh, like a mobility scooter? No, for like this, this brakes on like a, but what I have is really a pit bike. Uh, yeah, I don't do any pit bike stuff. Um, that's probably gonna be eBay or Amazon thing. It's also specific, uh, cause there's not really part numbers for them. So you're just kind of guessing. I would take them off and, uh, and then go hop on eBay and find ones that look the same and then, uh, try that. Oh, okay. But, All right, well, thank you. no problem. Thanks for calling. Yep. Right, bye. bye. How do we get so lucky with the most random calls when we're on a, on a when we're recording? Well, I think we need to start doing what's best is when they don't let you talk. Like, yeah, I got a 2014 Zhangdao uh, 17 volt mobility scooter and the joystick stuck, and I can go left and I can go right, but I can't turn left and right at the same time. And they just keep going and going. I tried to like, load it on my motor home, yeah. and I end up running into it. Well, you try to talk to him and just say, hey. We, you know, I'm sorry we don't do mobility scooters, but they just keep going and going and going and going. And then you feel worse <laughs> the longer it goes because you're like, this guy's talking to me for 10 minutes about his mobility scooter. Um, so what we could, we could get into mobility scooters. What do you think, Paul? What? You want to get into mobility scooters? Dude, I bet you okay. there's more money in that than that. We should start modifying mobility scooters. I was going to say, let's put a CR500 motor in a mobility scooter. This was an idea of mine. Modify mobility scooters for people that have money, that are retired. Say, I'm paralyzed because... I fell off a scooter or my daughter stabbed me or something like that. Um, Your daughter might stab yeah, me one of these she days. May. Let's say I'm paralyzed and I've got money, which I don't, but let's say I do, and I want to go explore off-road, Moab or whatever, I would pay good money for like a five-link articulating off-road posi mobility scooter. Yep. But what about... I would. Yeah, I would too. That's what I'm saying. There's money in it. Let's do it. I, do I need a trash idea spot on the... <laughs> I don't think I've had enough bad trash ideas to, to qualify for a spot. Okay. Well, you've also had ideas that we thought were good, and then we spent a lot of money, like the Zuma like, lenses. Like the fuel lines? No, 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 no. Zuma lenses. It does a pretty bad. You know what was my idea? The highway bars. How are they selling? Pretty good. Pretty no, good. I'm saying your ratio is probably way better than you mine. You never know. It's all gamble. Yeah, it's I know. Stuff. Your ratio is probably still way better than mine, but there were a couple, like, Wow, we should really shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Well, you know what? Let's drop the price on the taillights. We already did like three no, times. No, let's drop five bucks. Five bucks? 99 cents. <laughs> what? Five ninety nine? Free. You, okay. Five, okay, no, no, no. Okay. They're, they're $15, but you buy them get one free. Okay, they're $15. No, they're $15. <laughs> they're $15, but we'll give you a free box, a free shipping label, free packing material, free sticker. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get back to work. We'll figure out a code. I don't. I don't. I don't know about that one. But I'm getting free, bro. I'm getting distracted here. Okay, hold That's it there. That's a code. That's your code. Z M A L N S. Yep. And we'll figure the discount out by the time this video goes up. Yeah, it'll be on the screen right here. Nope. <laughs> you you'll have to go to the website to enter it in to see what the discount is. And do we have one out of the package? So. So yeah, what you get here. You want to verify what this is for? For so you can tell me. 2002 to 2011 Yamaha Zuma. You get wow. the metal tail light piece. And then you get the two little corners. Two little blinky boys. Blinky boys. Okay. Well, thank thanks for that deal up there, Paul. Yeah. It's a good idea. All right. No, it wasn't a good idea. How does Brandon do it? Well, you're obviously safe. You know, you got your mask. Look at these gloves. CV19. Masks and gloves. CV19, is that what it is? So what are you doing here? Okay, Kyle? so uh, typically the reds, blacks, and whatever are gonna be your stiffer springs. Um, always wear eye protection. Because you only have two eyes. Yeah, <laughs> um, spring hooks work good. This one's not too hard, but when you get to some of the real race clutches, they can be a, a real pain in the butt. I'm actually not a scooter mechanic. I'm an apprentice. Dustin's the uh, foreman. 
<laughs> general foreman? No, you, you would be the foreman. He would be... The actual hands-on doctor. Yeah. Dustin's going to buy the service department from me at some point and take it over. Right, Dustin? Yep. <laughs> There's a big market here for go pads and... Mobility scooters, mo electric scooters. Yeah. You know, Portland. Scooters. Yeah. And the people that drive the... Uh, gas-powered go-peds are typically the best customers. Dustin's really going to fine-tune his skill set working on yeah. go-peds. A lot of pull start replacements, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of technique in getting that uh, rope to wind back and forth correctly. Got to learn to tie good knots. Yeah, <laughs> so I'll probably have to go to like a knot tying school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and then shaving pin. Organic vin Egyptian uh, wound cord on old looms made by really old Egyptians, handmade. Nice. We could sell upgraded pole cords. <laughs> <laughs> People will buy it too. Ooh. Scammer? Where are you going? The phone is oh, literally right there. Phone. It's literally in Dustin's hand. Well, I know, but. Scooter Swap Shop, Service Department. Hey, man. Brian, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm not too bad. Look, I got my little uh, UTV here. It's got a Richard GY6 motor on it. I've been following some of your stuff, you guys, too. Uh, I'm online looking at a 171cc big board kit for it. Yep. Um, I thought they said that you had to cut to go to 171cc. You don't. You said it's a one. It's a 150cc right now, right? Yeah, it's a 150cc. The the hole in the uh, the case has the uh, or 50, no 65.78. Yep, that'll bolt, the 171 kit will bolt right on. What is this? Okay, What's so, that? So Patrick told me to back that thing up. Oh yeah. That's exactly what he said. Like a Mack truck. Um, we've got this tool here, available at scooterswapshop.com. Um, it comes with no instructions because half the scooter parts apparently don't come with any, and I'm assuming this is how it works. Basically on Jay's bike, the threads are really bad on this pulley, and we don't have Yamaha ones in stock, and they typically take months to get it if you can get them. So we're gonna try a new nut on here. Um, and if you work for this company that makes this piece, let us know if this is right, but this seems to work. Um, so I put these three bolts in here and they're pressing up against the clutch. And then I'm just gonna chuck this up in a vise here. And this is gonna allow me to, to thread this thing on. Nice um, and evenly. Yeah, so I mean, you're, you're not really gonna be able to get a wrench on it, but at least you can get it finger tight and then take the tool apart is my get. Actually, no. Yeah, well, once you get it on, yeah, I guess yeah, once you, 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 you uh, finger tight, yeah. you can use the, the fancy wrench we also have in stock. Yeah. So we also have this. We use this to hold the clutch, and then we have a wrench over there on the lift to turn this nut. But I don't want to. Well, first I needed to see you know how to use this tool to show you guys how to use it. Um, but I'll hold this nut up here so you can kind of see how it works here. So just lift your nut up here like so. You just turn this guy down. You have to use an impact, but that's so that's bottomed out. And now you can just get in here and just turn this nut on. See, this kind of binds up right in there, which is kind of unfortunate because his threads are so messed up. But I just want to get this thing on and tuned and dialed, and then we can always replace um, replace it later. I'm just wondering if I could just loosen one of these, or if I could just loosen one side to get a wrench in there to turn it, because the second I take it off, it's going to put a lot of pressure on it. Normally, you don't have an issue with this, right? This is just so tight because his pulley is messed up. But you can look to see and make sure it's, it's flat, it's on true. It feels like it's going to slip. Ooh, you know what else slips? We're good. Ooh. It was getting in badly. Yep, I told you. You told me what, Paul? I told you don't do it. Yeah, you know what? At the end, the customer's bike's going to be sitting on the dyno for upwards of a month. It we can't have that. the dyno, we would have taken it off of the dyno. And done what with it? Put it somewhere safe. Are we trying to work on bikes and fix bikes? and yes. get them out the door Yes. the happy customer? While still providing a quality repair. I spoke with the customer and told them what we were gonna do. and said this would get you by. Okay. But what are you gonna do if it breaks? Do you trust this? Do you trust this? I honestly Do you trust that it's strong? It's gonna come break my nose right now. <laughs> Can go you imagine if we caught that on film? <laughs> I'll just like, <laughs> boom! Right in Paul's face, he's like, oh! And I guess, and I guess and then I guess Paul does bleed. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Ooh. It's fine. Okay. The pirate is back. <laughs> so, okay. So, uh, all seriousness, um, I actually don't know how this works, but it worked this way. You know, take this thing apart. 
like this, like that. You've got a washer and this guy on the bottom, like so. Um, so, so this is just gonna sandwich this whole thing once you thread it on like this and you tighten it up, adjust these where they need to be and then it's gonna pinch us together and then you should be able to get take this nut off. However, I don't know how you can take the nut off when this is installed over the top of it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's a cool tool. If you figure out a better way to use it than what we just did, let us know. I think it's better for putting it together than it is for taking mm -hmm. it apart. I think but, taking uh, it apart is pretty easy. Yeah. I think but, the old fast, fashion way of just stepping on it is probably the easiest. It is, but if you want a tool, it did work. Yeah, it worked for what we were doing. If you had an open end, if you had an open end in there, yeah. You could and if it. you really needed to put a strong spring in, this would be perfect because it's a pain otherwise. Yeah. So <clears throat> I wouldn't say absolutely necessary, but it's cheap. I think it's like twenty dollar tool, so it's kind of a nice thing to have. We will probably never use it again here. Actually, you know what? Like the runner. Yeah, the that would be great. Runner or, or the like, T Max. T Max had bolts oh. built in, so the T Max had. It had bolts built in of, in the pulley from the back side. Oh, that was to fit the clutch in because you can't compress a Contra. It had bolts, you, you thread it in here and it spread the Contra open to drop the belt all the way and then you took the bolts out and it lowered it back down. Because you can't squeeze the, the, you can't squeeze it. Yeah, no, it's like a, a coil over it's spring. <laughs> yeah, so cool tool. We'll put this guy here, probably never get used again. Maybe we won't put it here. Where do you hang something like this? Hmm. That's a good spot. Okay, I'm gonna put this thing back together. This is all stuff we've talked about a million times too. Hey guys, put this back together. You can press the belt down as far as you can. Actually, let's see here. I swear I did a video similar to this with Paul. Yeah, you know what though? I wonder, that belt should be going down further. Well, no, that's it. So also you can kind of, when you compress it, you can see how far down your belt's getting. I almost think his should go down a little bit more. I'm not sure why it's sitting right there, but um, you know, running into this stuff, it could be that this pulley isn't from this bike. This could be a, a pulley from a totally different bike too. So hopefully not, but so compress it, hold it like this. If you have girly hands, find someone with strong hands who can actually accomplish a task. You want me to do that for you? No. <clears throat> well, maybe. <laughs> yeah, see, I don't see that belt's never going to max out on there, ever. You can see how high that's going. So I'm wondering if he's got a Honda, or just is a Honda pulley he's got on here, or something, because it should compress. It should open more than that, and it's not. That's not right. Yeah. Wow. OK. Well, see, you should be able to, this should go down further in the back and open up further in the front. So as you can see, he's never going to get his max speed here. Is it um, the right belt? It is the right belt, um, but I'm almost thinking this pulley should open because you can kind of see how far down that pulley is going in there, or that belt, see right here. It should, it should go down further than that, and it's not. So we'll see his belt, his pulley doesn't say Yamaha on it or anything, so... I'm almost wondering if he's got a Honda pulley on here. Yeah, I think he does. I think this is a Honda. This is a Honda pulley. It's not opening up far enough. Maybe you just have too girly of hands? It's possible. Let's check it out. It doesn't go down very far at all. Yeah. Hmm. Wait. Well, you just put that together. What? 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 What's what? goods here I'll show you guys what's going on this is not opening up all the way um, and that's that's absolutely maxed out 100 percent we're gonna go ahead and do the overrange is you've got your full variator here Melosa calls it the multi bar a die grinder and you've got to basically carve this stuff out went to super sunday and let kale ride it one year on it and he hit the throttle and looped out the clutch spring having set up right is the difference between a bike that you have to use your feet to accelerate on and a bike that will flip over from a dead stop. Time happens, Paul. Well, I mean, you had half the day off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's nice about this is it replaces everything 
the front pulley, your boss, and then this star piece and the variator. Got some different grooves here. They're all gonna be different angles. Um, the one I like to use is gonna be the one that's most tipped over this way. Mm -hmm.